do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will right, we'll hold off just a minute. Y'all can just look at me, it's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, don't, you might not believe it, but I'm one of the shyest persons you've ever met. I'd rather be on that back seat back there. But see, when God calls you, are we ready? All right, here we go. God's called me. So, his anointing begins to operate, and I don't get shy no more. I'm as bold as a lion. <laughs> oh, watch out. Get your Bibles, and we're going to have it up on the board. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. We've had some people that got water baptized last Sunday. And the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God, a free gift. God gives us eternal life when we repent and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we confess Him as our Lord and Savior in front of people and we believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead. The Bible says we're saved and God gives us the free gift of eternal life. And I'm excited about that because there's many, many uh, benefits of being a Christian. You know, when I was in the world, and I, I was in the world for 26 years uh, of my life, I, I was 26 years old before I received Christ as my personal Savior. And I know all, all about the honky-tonks. I know about all the drinking and the stuff that goes out in the world. And I did my portion of it, and I'm not complaining, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you, that I know that side of the, of, of the road. But since I've been a Christian, I have a joy in my heart. Well, Brother Bobby, do, since you've become a Christian, do, do you have any more problems? Yeah, but I have the problem solver that lives within me. See, he helps me to solve the problems that I have without tearing up the church, without tearing up my family, without tearing up the society. He's alive, and he lives within me, and he lives within you if you've given your life to Christ. So we have the, the, the problem solver living in us. And I want you to see the benefits that we have uh, as Christians. Now let's read verse 4. Even as in his love he chose us. Who chose us? God chose us. It's up on the board. God chose us. Actually picked us out for himself as his own. Boy, that's powerful. How would you like to have a father that has trillions and trillions upon trillions and trillions upon trillions of dollars? If you're saved, you have a father that has everything that you will ever need. By the way, we say, you know, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. You were running as hard as you could. You were resisting the Holy Ghost. I was resisting the Holy Ghost. You didn't find him. He found you out. In fact, he chose you before the foundation of the world. Now, boy, to have a father like that, I wasn't even born. You know, if you look at a tombstone, you have, like, for example, here's mine. Born on this earth in 1933. That's before some of you all was born. 1933. You have that little dot, and then he passed away in 20 whatever. Now, what happens between those two dates is our little life down here. You could hardly see it on the tombstone. But that little dot in between those two, time you were born and the time you pass in this life, is your span of life. It's but a vapor. James says, our life is but a vapor. Now, if you're a good mathematic man, and you're a man or a woman of wisdom, it seems to me that it's worth giving your life to the Lord 
in that little ditzy time, you can hardly see it between the two dates, give you that little life to the Lord for all eternity in a glorified body, living with God in His presence throughout eternity, never will have to experience death again, never will have to experience suffering, pain, never have to worry about paying the bills, everything is taken care of, you live in a glorified body, not just in a little space like that, but throughout eternities, eternities of eternities, you will live a life in a glorified body. And all of God's people said, that's powerful. Now you need to think that through. Well, I'm not willing to give up my drinking and, and dipping snuff, chewing tobacco, and picking my nose. Well, you know, bless your little heart. If that's the decision you're going to make, if you want to hold on to that little bit of time between the day you were born and the day you're going to pass, because you're going to pass from this life. Right by some of these uh, cemeteries. That little teeny bit of life that they had between those two dates, long gone. My grandpappy, long gone. But you know, he's long gone as far as this old world's concerned. But he has eternity upon eternities to live in the presence of God. Now, brother, what a deal that is. Well, I'm going to hold on to my little dot down here because I can't give up them drugs. I get nylon. I mean, I, I, I see all these lights when I'm on drugs. Honey, child, let me tell you something. The lights that you'll see in heaven in your glorified body, those little lights you see under the drugs and nothing is garbage. When you see the presence and the glory of God in heaven, and you say, thank goodness I gave up that little dot for all of this glory that I have to enjoy throughout eternity. Does that make sense to you? Somebody say amen. Anybody, one person. Oh, come on, let's see the picture. Now listen, God chose you before the foundation of the world. Yes, he chose you. You, you. Now we have to respond. Aren't you glad you responded to the message? Aren't you, aren't you glad? Can you imagine being in a theater? Somebody might come in here and shoot us off. Now, Bob, don't give nobody fear. I'm, not, I'm just telling you facts. Hello, are you out there? Now, I told, you know, Mike knows. He's got a big shotgun back there. You, you got that shotgun back there? If anybody comes in here with a gun, shoot them. <coughs> You're in the theater. How many, how many seen the news about these people going to this midnight movie? How many seen them? Let's see your news. Let's see. Okay, I just want to. You think those people went in there thought that they were going to be in eternity? That they were going to give up that little dot? Now, the question is not that they got shot. The question I want to ask is, are they ready to meet God? Hello? Are they ready for eternity? Have they been born again? Or are they just down here enjoying the little bit of life that they had between the two dates, the date they were born and the date they passed on this life? Well, maybe we'll just get rid of all the guns and that'll solve the problem. No, it won't. The problem is in the heart. I said the problem is in the heart. Five thousand years ago, uh, four thousand years ago, they were sneaking through the jungle, and they would see you, and they throw this knife at you. Today, we don't bother with that. What we do is we just drop an atomic bomb. See, we get, see how much we've educated ourselves? We know how to kill them by the millions now. Oh, yeah, 2,000 years ago, just take your little air around, get one. I'll get my atomic bomb out today, drop it on the whole city, blow the whole city up. Have we come very far yet? 
And that's the way it'll always happen. Because until the heart gets right, down here, the Bible says it's not within man to know how to walk. It's not within us to know how to talk. Our worst taskmaster is ourself. Everybody say, myself is my worst taskmaster. Now, you might not believe that, but if you live long enough as I have, I look back on my life and I was more down on myself than I was other people. If I made a mistake, I'd beat myself up at least three times. Anybody in here that beats themselves up three times when you do something bad besides me, look at the hands. See, I know, I've worked with people over the years. That's the way we are. <coughs> but I don't live for myself anymore. I live for him who died for me. And boy, what a difference. Now, let's, I'm going to read this. Let's read this now. Now, I'm looking, even as in his love, he did it because of his love. He wanted to. He chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be wholly consecrated and set apart for him and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. I remember years ago, my aunt, her kids were perfect. You can laugh. How many of you think your kids are perfect? One. Well, give it a little time. <laughs> her kids were perfect. But you know what? That's how God sees us. We're perfect and blameless in his eyes. Once you become a Christian and you give your life to Christ, he becomes your Lord and Savior of mercy. You become perfect, blameless in the eyes of God because of the shed blood of Christ. That's powerful. Now, the quicker you will accept that, the quicker that will become a reality in your life. You sow that into your life. How many of you know sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping? And as long as you see yourself just a, a worm in the cabbage patch, you'll act like a worm. Come on, church. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. If you think you're nobody, you will act like a nobody. Listen, I'm here to tell you, if you've been born again, you're sons of God. You're heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. You have been made righteous once and for all by the shed blood of Christ. I didn't hear one amen. Because I, I don't have my hearing aid in, so you may be, I don't know. I want to say that again. In God's eyes, you are perfect. You are righteous. Blameless. You are his sons and his daughters. You're perfect in his sight. But see, as long as you don't believe that, and you still believe that you are an old worm in the cabbage patch, that's all you will do, run around eating cabbage. But once you understand and, and, and take God's verdict, that you've been made righteous in his sight, blameless in his sight, you get that seed inside of you, that seed will bear fruit like you've never seen before. You'll be surprised, absolutely. You will be surprised of a lot of that old self-life that will fall off of you, and you won't even have to do a whole lot of reckoning because you've taken it in and you believe what you are now, right now, in Christ. You are perfect. Now, I'm not talking about your behavior. That's another subject. That's where the reckoning comes in. But we're talking about your position in Christ. You've been raised to sit with Christ right now in heavenly places. You think you're seated, seated here. You're not seated here. In God's eyes, you're seated with Christ in heaven. That's your place of authority. And so you can see that, You'll be crawling down here like a worm eating cabbage. And maybe sometimes broccoli. You have to see 
yourself as God sees you right now. Now that, I struggle with that. You're looking at a man that has struggled through everything that there can be in the Bible. Every promise of God I've struggled through. I have wrestled with God. I'm like Jacob. But when you wrestle with God, He'll change your name to Christian. He changed Jacob's name to Israel. Is the air conditioning on? Not complaining, just asking. All right, let's read a little bit more. Verse 5 up there on the board. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will. Because we were so good... He just had to do it. Oh, hallelujah, it's up on the board. Hmm. In accordance with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and was his con intent. Everybody say, God is righteous. God is good. Aren't you glad? Can we fathom his love? Now let me bring this down to, to your level of understanding. How many have kids in here? How many wish you didn't have any kids in here? <laughs> Did I see? Let me say that right. How many has got kids in here? How many wish they didn't have any kids? Okay, that's good. That's good. So you're glad you got kids. That's very good. In the natural, you have kids through the natural birth. And let's say you adopt one child into your family. That one child that you adopt into your family is, is just as equal, as far as the law is concerned, in your family. Let's say you have two kids by the natural birth and you have one through adoption. That one that's been adopted will get the same inheritance that those other two natural kids that you had through natural birth. He will get the equal amount of, of inheritance. That's the way the law looks at it. If I'm wrong, let me know. That's powerful thought. We've been adopted. That's why we're heirs of God and co's heir with Jesus Christ. What does that mean, Bob? That means that everything that God has is His children's. It belongs to you and me. And you don't have to work for it. That's powerful thought. Co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We are seated with Christ right now, as far as God's concerned, in heavenly places. You see, God counts those things that be not, somebody help me, as though it were. It appears that we're not victorious, but we are victorious. We're more than conquerors. I didn't say you were a conqueror. I said you were more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. See, unless that gets down into your spirits, it's just words. But when it gets down in your spirit, man... You, you ever seen an 80-year-old man do a little skip? I could do better without these shoes. But I'm a, that's not bad, you know? Heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ? <coughs> man, that's powerful. God so loved me that he gave his only begotten Son. What does that mean to you? I want to birth it into you. I want to birth it into you. Oh, I wish I could. Only the Spirit of God can do it. You're not just somebody floating around down here. God has a purpose for His children. How many in here have small children and you have a purpose for your children? Hmm? Come on, let's identify with God a little bit. 
How many really loves their children in here? How many would like to send them to the moon sometimes? Yeah. All right, that's because you're natural. You see, we think this. This is what we think. Well, I'm not worthy. Can I say something? Can I say something? Let me say something. Can I say something? Say something. Oh, you want to, you want to tuck? Yeah, okay. Don't hurt the old man. Okay. How can God love me? Now I can see He can love you guys. Well, how can He love me? Has anybody ever thought that? Come on. Get over it. It ain't about you. It's about His loving kindness. It's about he cho- his purpose from before the foundation of the world. He chose you to be his child. Listen, let me tell you something. When you go into ministry, you don't look for qualified people. God qualifies his people. Are you listening? Someone said, well, I'm not qualified. Yeah, I know. But he will qualify you because he's the qualifier. Yes, we were once lost. We were once in sin. Sin was our master. It dominated us. It controlled us. And we know that sin came into the world through one man. And it was passed down through all of us. And we passed it on to our kids. The DNA. Boom, 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 boom. All the way from Adam to Brother Bob. My spirit was dead. That's why I had to be born again. Now before I was saved, God was somebody in heaven. He's somebody that created the world. But I had no personal relationship with him. I believe he existed like the devils. They believe that God exists. And I can't explain it. I wish I could. All I know is this. I had it up in my brain and it fell from there to my heart. The preacher wasn't even preaching. He was up there giving, uh, giving announcements. I rose out of the chair. Walked down there, stood before him. Why did I do that? I'm a bashful critter. You tell me to stand, I hold on to my chair. Rip it right off the floor. Are you listening? What caused me, what caused me to get out of the chair, go down there, not even an invitation. He hadn't even preached a message. What moved on me? God chose me before the foundation of the world. The Holy Spirit got in my heart, began to work in my heart. Get out of my way. I'm coming down, but it's not the invitation time. I'm sorry about your whatever, your whatever. It's time for Bob Tilton to give his heart to the Lord. I don't care who sees me. I don't care what you think. I, I can't say I found the Lord, but I certainly responded to the Lord and walked down that aisle, and from that point on, I was different inside. Was I perfect at all my actions? No! Talk to Susan! But I had a heartbeat inside after God. And I've walked with Him for 54 years, and I love Him with all my heart, so mind and change. He changed me. I could not change myself. That's why I don't try to change you. If I try to change anybody, it changed me. But you can't change yourself. That's why you've got to trust the Lord and say, God, change me from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us that. We are being changed from glory to glory from the inside out. And when a man is changed, listen to this, when a man and a woman is changed from the inside out, his actions, the manifestation of how he talks, how he moves, how he loves people, how he responds in every situation, how he acts, how he reacts, what he cuts out of his life, what he allows to come into his life. It all is happening on the inside. And that's done by the Spirit of God. How many people are sitting in our churches? And I I say this with, with compassion in my heart. I've been around a long time. 
religious. The Bible talks about that in Timothy. But denying the power of God to change them from glory to glory. A form of religion, but denying the power of God to change them from the inside out. That's why you can't hardly explain it. Bob, how, how can you love somebody that fusses at you? Now, Susan don't fuss at me now. She slaps me around a few times, but she don't. I, I just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she knows better than I. And she wouldn't do that. Oh, if I could explain it. Chosen. Chosen. Bob, you were chosen before the foundation of the world. You were an heir of God, a co-heir with Jesus Christ. If that don't excite you, I don't have anything to say. But I'll say this, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. And there should be some changes going on in your life, even right now, the Spirit of God should be bringing you from glory to glory. I'm not talking about getting saved. I'm talking about you are saved, and you should be moving from the next glory, the next glory, and the next glory. What I used to think, I think no more, because God's changed my mind. And I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. How can you love a baby that messes up the diaper? You know, I, back in, in my earlier days, and I'm going to try to be calm here, you know, dignified a little bit. See, I'm a farmer at heart. <laughs> I only have a certain amount of terminology I can share my thoughts, so you'll have to bear with me. I didn't go to, uh, anyway, we won't go through that. How can you love a little child? You just change his diaper. You powder it up. It smells like a rose. And it's, it's all cleaned up. You gave it a bath, and you're so proud of it. And you pick the child up in your arms, and you hug the child, and the child goes, <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Susan! Susan was always so kind and so gentle. Take the child. <laughs> How many have ever done that, huh? Yeah, 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 some of you have. Some of you never changed a diaper in your life. See, back in our days, we had the type of diapers. You, don't, you, don't, you didn't buy them. It, you bought, it's a big sheet. You ever seen those big sheets, you know? And, and you, <laughs> the little baby's about like that, and you're changing that diaper. You've got a big sheet like this. The baby's about like that, and you're changing the diaper. You've got to be an expert to put a diaper on a baby that small. And you got to pin it on them. <laughs> Susan said, I'll take care of it. <laughs> you haven't lived until you change the kids' diapers. It takes three days to clear the house out. <laughs> then you find out if you really got love in your heart for your kid. But how many of you know... You don't throw the baby away. You don't condemn the child. You work with the child. And see, that's how God... How many of you have messed up your diapers so many times? Hmm? How many has ever messed up their diaper? Come on. Don't lie to Grandpa. I'm oh, sure you have. Then you say, God, how can you love me? Because you see, God is love. He said, okay, let's go over this again. Now, I don't want you to learn the hard way. I want you to learn by just obeying my word, and things will go better with you. How many's learned that? Hmm? How many's still learning the hard way? I don't want to look. Okay, that's all well, right. You're learning. That's the main thing. If it's the hard way, it's okay. But I am learning. And it's so much better. God loves you not because you're so pretty, not because of the color of your skin, not because of how much money you've got, not because of the great education you've got. He loves you for yourself. Yeah. 
and he's taken a wretch like us and he's put our feet upon the rock. He says, Bob, I'm going to teach you how to think. I'm going to teach you how to walk. I'm going to teach you how to stand under pressure. And brother, if you don't think being a pastor or a minister is not in the pressure cooker, read my lips. You think you got big demons after you sometimes, you ought to see the big ones after me. I've learned when they get after me, Susan! How many of you two is better than one? I knew when I'm up against the wall and I need help. Frank! Sometimes you have to call on some other saints to help you. You know why God allows that? It's a humbling experience to have your wife prayed for you. How many men in here, Lord, help me to stay out of trouble. No, get in trouble, okay. How many men in here has ever had your wife to pray for you? One, two, three, four. You must be tough folk. <laughs> Years ago when I worked at the air base, and you're talking about the pressure cooker. See, Don, Don's a, a colonel in, in the Air Force. He was always on my back. Well, it looked just like him. They were colonels. <laughs> this airplane, Mr. Tilton, will fly. And it will fly at the proper time. Yes, sir. And then you got some rebellious people working for you that they don't want you to tell them what to do. Is anybody, anybody like that in here? <laughs> tell it like it is, Bob. I will. I will. That's the only way we're going to grow. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I know everything you do. Well, God will take care of that. One day you find out you won't know nothing. And that's when you come to realize he knows everything. <laughs> I rely on him now. He's my source, my strength. Yes, you're a child of God. God's called you. Listen, we're not up there yet. We're still down here. And Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulations, you will have problems. But he says, cheer up. I have overcome the world. This last two weeks, it's like one thing after another with Susan and me. We get one thing settled, and there's another thing. Yeah, you know, we, had, we went to the doctor and had all these beauty marks burned off of us. Or was it beauty marks? It was ugly marks. How many know what I'm talking about? You, know, you get old, your skin sort of... Don't want to cooperate with you as much. You think I look better this morning? You haven't noticed, have you? You don't see me now? Anyway. He burned them all. I had all these marks and scabs on my face. Susan had all on her. But we kept coming. We came to church. How many noticed it? Love covers the multitude of sin. <laughs> you just covered it. I'm just saying that everything is not. But here's what I want you to see. God has chosen us. He's caused us to be born again by His Spirit. We are His children. We have eternity. Don't get caught up with that little space of time between the two dates. Bob Tilton, born 1933, March 11, 1933. I remember the day very well. It was a windy day. That's what my dad said. That's why I know it. He told me about it. He was in the Marine Corps. I was born in the Navy Hospital in Washington, D.C. A little boy. They say I was beautiful. Who questions who, who, who questions that? I've never seen an ugly baby. Have you? I mean, every baby is beautiful. Precious. I had to be pretty. Now, you might question it now, but not back then. But I want you to see something. You're only down here. The fact, the Bible says that we're just pilgrims 
passing through this life. I mean, I look back on my almost 80 years now. I can't believe it. I looked in the mirror one day. I said, Susan, come here quick. What is it, darling? What is it? Who's that in the mirror? That's you. That's you. What happened, huh? Honey, that little space right there, you're at the end of the trail, son. <laughs> but listen, when you're at the end of that little space, you are at the beginning of eternities after eternities after eternities after eternities in a glorified body, living for God, no hunger, no syndrome bug payments, no more car breakdowns. We got eternity to live for God. We can think and be where we want to be, whatever we think. I think I'll go to the beach. You're at the beach. I think I'll be in the mountains. I'm in the mountains. I think I'll go to California. I'm in California. You'll travel just like that. Y'all don't believe that, do you? How many really believe it? Don't lie to me. One, two, this. You all don't believe it? I mean, you've got things today. I mean, look. At How many has got an internet? How many of you know you sent a message to Russia just like that? Boop. Well, you read your Bible. Jesus appeared and disappeared. I mean, he was here, he was gone. He ate in his resurrected body. To buy. Okay, i got to get the Bible out. <clears throat> Turn to Philippians. Chapter 3, put it on the board. Verse 20 and 21. Are we there? We are there. What does it say? But we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. And from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ of Assar as Savior. Now listen, we are citizens of heaven. Everybody say, I'm a citizen of heaven. Your citizenship down here is just temporary. That nice car you got is temporary. Your good looks, look at me, will fade away. Sorry, girls. All the makeup in the world won't help you when you reach a certain age. I know you'll spend millions of dollars to look pretty between now and then, but at the end... It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Gosh, Bob, I'm not used to all this truth. <clears throat> who will, notice the verse 21. Who will transform? Who will? Who will? Jesus will, when he comes, will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty. We'll have a body just like the body of Jesus Christ, by exerting that power which enables him even to subject everything to himself, to be conformed to and be like the body of his glory, his resurrected body. That's exciting. No more hospital visits. No more pills. Now, you can eat. I like that. If you know your Bible, Jesus was on the shore. The disciples, you know, went back fishing. Well, the Lord was on the, on the island over there on the, on the beach there. He, he cooked some fish and some bread and invited his disciples. He was in his resurrected body. He told Thomas, I'm not a spirit. Here, feel my hands. Feel the wounds. Listen to me. Right now, we have a man seated at the right-hand side of the Father. A man. And his name is Jesus. And he's in his glorified body. And we are seated with him in heavenly places. That's our place of authority. Even though we're walking down here on this earth, our place of authority is in heaven. That's why we have... We, we can take authority over principalities and powers, over demons. We can exercise authority because our power comes from that place in heaven where we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. We've been raised to sit with him. Now, you've got to accept that by faith. 
See yourself seated there with Christ. That's your place of authority. You don't let sin or, or, or demons or anything run shotgun over you. No, you are reigning in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You are, I am, we are to reign in this life right now. But one day he's going to take us off this planet. But now I've got news for you. One day he's going, we're going to bring back, he's going to bring us back on this planet. And for 1,000 years we'll be living on this planet with Jesus Christ. And the Jewish nation will be the capital of all the other nations. And Christ will be right there ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. That's why the devil is trying to blow all that up to make God's prophecy look like it ain't true. But he's been trying to do that from the beginning of time. Let's read that again. Who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty. Powerful. We have so much to look forward to. You might have a little problem. You know... <clears throat> Things are happening pretty rough in your life. Like I said, for the last two or three weeks, Susan B. said one thing after another. And, uh, but we walk through each thing gracefully, trusting God, keeping, keeping our, uh, our mind straight, keeping our priorities straight, doing God's work first. We walk through all of those things. But I remember the time, one little thing, one little thing would get me to drinking. I'd go right to the bottle. But you see, there's been a transformation on the inside. See, the first transformation is on the inside. We are new creatures right now. Put up on the board, if you will, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Start there. Let's see that, and then we're going to close. But I want you to see today that God has done a work inside of you. You have a spirit man that's been born again if you put your faith and trust in the Lord. If you're here, you don't know Christ, you don't have any interest in spirit things, let me tell you why. You're lost. If you die, you'd have to go to hell. That's not God's will. God's will is that no man, no man perish, but it all should come to repentance. So we have, the Christian has a great future. But the lost person that says, I'm going to hold on to that little life and I'm going to do everything I want to do, you can. God has given you a will, be my guest. But I tell you what, that's the foolish choice to make when God has called you before the foundation of the world to be his child. And he's saying to you, I love you, I have a future for you. My plans for you are great. I am so glad that I'm on the Lord's side and God is on my side. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who do you care that's against you? If God is for you, yeah, that little bit of time that we're spending here between the two dates of when you were born and when you're going to check out and brother, sister, read my lips, you will check out. Amen. Unless God comes back. Unless the Lord comes back. Don't hold on to that little teeny life and for the momentary pleasures that you might get out of that little teensy, weensy little time limit you have down here. See the full picture of the glory of God, the eternities after eternities. Being able to explore all of the universe. God is a big God. How big is your God? Let me tell you how big God is. Just look at the universe. That's just a little portion of God. God has universities, universes after universes. There are so many earths out there. There are so many moons out there. There are so many black holes out there. I was reading, not reading, but I was watching the TV talk about billions of black holes out there. What is a black hole? Somebody tell me. We both know. 
I can give you a little idea, but we won't go into that. God is a big God. And he's got good plans for his children. How many in here has good plans for your children? Let me see your hands. Very good. How many has got bad plans for your kids? I'm glad I'm not your kid. God is a heavenly father. Don't ever run from him. Run to him. Cry. Weep. Cry unto the Lord. For his ears are attentive to the cries of his children. We have a great future. And don't let people suck you, suck you in. We were reading Proverbs this morning. Read Proverbs. I hope you will. Let's rob the bank. We'll have a lot of money. Go talk to the million and some people in jail. Millions of people could be enjoying life. And they're in jail. And I hear there's not a whole lot of air conditioning in those jails. 24-7 in jail. See, God's given you a will. That's why the Bible says, Choose you this day whom you will serve. God will not force you. You must choose. Thank God I chose 54 years ago. And I have never regretted it. I didn't even count the fellowshipping that we have with God. Every day I fellowship with God, and I'm sure that many of you do too. Fellowship through His Word. His Word is more alive to me than ever before. I am overwhelmed with the blessings of God. Just knowing God, just His presence in my life. Oh, I thank God for my golf cart. I thank God for my car, 1995 Mercury. I got to get some new tires on it this week. Have you noticed everything wears out down here? You will wear out too. Your bodies will wear out. But God's got a brand new Cadillac for you. Up to date technology. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to, it's sort of hot. Let's go to Alaska. You're at Alaska. See, some of you don't believe that. See, there's, you've got to understand in the spiritual realm, there's different laws in the spiritual realm. Can you understand that? Different laws in the spiritual realm. I'm going to ask you a question. Let's just cut the gravity off of you right now. <laughs> Tell me where you'd go. We'd be stuck to the ceiling. If you were outside, you... Good to know you, Bob. <laughs> you hold it on to the tree. That's why you stay here. When gravity has no more power over you, in the resurrected body, powerful. No more sickness. I love that. No more brushing your teeth every day. I won't have any glasses. I'll have hair on my head. That's going to be exciting. Jonathan, you think I'd look good with hair on my head? Hmm? Huh? I see some of you getting stiff on me. <laughs> Can you imagine being married to this? When you leave here, I want you to be lighthearted. I want you to see that God chose you before the foundation of the world. You are the people of God. God has great plans for you. Don't hold to anything down here because everything down here will pass away. We don't look at the things that we see, but we look at the things we do not see. For the things that you see are temporary, but the things you do not see are eternal. I'm talking about eternal things here. I'm talking about eternity throughout eternity in a glorified body, serving God, being in the very presence of God. Listen, I've been in the presence of God. Don't you think he looks good like that? He looks good. Looks better than I do. Listen. 
I've been in the presence of God, and you can't hardly stand up in the presence of God. Frank and me has been down here on our face in the presence of God. Susan and me have been in. Some of you have. Can you imagine? We have to have a glorified body to come into the full power of His glory. It's hard for us to conceive about His glory beaming out of Him, just beaming out of God. Power, the presence of God. Whew. And we will be in His presence throughout eternity. Don't hold on to that little spot between the day you were born and the day you're going to check out. Because, brother, you're going to check out, and you don't have to be 80 years old to check out today. You might be in a theater, and they'll carry you out. Because that's happening in our nation. So what is the solution? Don't play the fool's part. Give your heart to Christ Why you can. Don't fall asleep! Wake up! There's eternity out there. And you can think otherwise if you want to, but one day, the Bible says, is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. You're going to die, and we're going to put it on the gravesite. Born 1933. Well, little speck. You can hardly see it. That was his life beginning to end, and passed away in the year 20. Anybody want to give me a date? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready right now. But Susan says, oh, please don't leave me, honey. <laughs> okay, we'll stay around a while longer. But seriously, are you ready? If he'd come right now, you know what? We are to look for his coming, for his appearance. He says, I'm coming again for those who are looking for my appearance. Wow! Well, I ain't been looking. You better start looking. And I'll be preaching on the end times pretty soon because we can see it mounting up. We can see it mounting up. Well, Bob, I don't believe all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't care what you believe. I'm going to teach you the Bible. It's up to you to believe it. Or disbelieve it. Be my guest. I'm charged to preach the gospel, the full gospel. But it doesn't matter. Good times or bad times, I'm ready. Good times and bad times, you're ready. Good times, bad times, you're ready. Isn't it wonderful to know your boys are ready? Amen. My kids went to the movie. I got a telephone call. They're down at the hospital. What are they doing in the hospital? They were shot. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. We may be out of here before sundown. And all of God's people said, Amen. and we're out of church exactly at 1 o'clock. Stand to your feet and say, thank God I don't have a preacher to preach all day. <laughs> if you don't know the Lord, come up. We'll pray for you. Other than that, turn to somebody and say, boy, I am, thank God that I'm living for my Lord. Amen.